There we go. So this is what the game looks like without debug stuff. A little 2D game. So we want to implement a feature on that. Before we implement a feature on that, we got to decide what we want to implement. And before we decide on that, we probably want to like talk about what it even is because I don't think uh, I've given Andrew much time to even know like how this runs. Right now, it's one big ugly file of code that probably needs to be refactored. Yeah, let's see the file of code. So we'll we'll first look at code, the file the code of code. File. So this is the code file. <laughs> the to dos. <laughs> Um, but no, it's just this main.go, and let's see how long it is. I'm not quite at a thousand lines, because that's the rule, right? If it's over a thousand lines, you got to refactor. But, yeah, it's kind of ugly. You have your main function at the bottom, because I feel like that's the most appropriate place for main. So this is the most abstract it gets. We initialize, and then we run, and then we quit. And that's it. That's the whole game. But realistically, there's kind of like three phases on each. This is a, I guess you could call this, maybe I'll leave a comment here. This is like a frame, right? Each frame. And I think we target like 60 frames per second. So you can imagine this runs 60 times per second, roughly. Main thing we're using uh, is Raylib. I think it's like a C library that's ported in Go. I don't even know if it's ported. I think you just call C. Um, procedures from Go, so it's still in C, which is kind of inefficient to my understanding, like calling C from Go, but hey, it works, it's fun, it's a 2D game, performance is second, yes. second package I use in here for collision, and it ends up not really covering all the use cases I needed, so I implemented some of the collision on my own, specifically the combat collision, so super high level, again, we have enemies, we have sprite objects, weapons, player, and then a whole lot of logic to, oh yeah, and then stuff that draws the map. And then a whole lot of logic that does stuff with collision, damage, and weapons, and movement. Yeah. A, that whole block right there is just movement? This block is just a player Starting attack. Starting on, uh, yeah, line 216. Oh, just attacking? This is a player attacking for 40 lines of code. Yeah. So, you know, some... I don't know if this is really a to-do. It probably should be a to-do. Yeah, this is a to-do. <laughs> um, some of this code should be like in structs, but I'm just like, for the moment being, just throw it in there so I have it to do the math. Oh yeah, some, trigonom some trigonometry. Yeah, some good old trigonometry. This is, this is actually one of the coolest parts of the game, is like, everything's a projectile. And then the angle the projectile spawns from the player is kind of some neat math. That's all. So would that not just make it easier for us to implement, like, uh, range weapons? Yeah, since that's, everything's a projectile. I guess, like, if I were to say there's a source of imp inspiration, um, there's like this game called Realm of the Mad God. Maybe I could like just find a quick image. But, like, everything's a projectile. It's kind of like a bullet hell game. You see, like, there's an enemy kind of like shooting projectiles. Okay. So it's kind of it's some inspiration from that. <clears throat> also, uh, all the sprites we're using. So I have all my resources here. I have I made the music, uh, except for one thing was I think the the sword attack is a free thing, but I, I made the music, and then I, ri I I didn't rip it off. It's like this website where they give licensing terms. So I only chose sprites where people are like use it for whatever you want to use it for. So like here's the main one I think I'm using right now. Is this sprite sheet? If I can zoom out, okay. I can't zoom out. Why can't I zoom out? Oh no. <laughs> well, that's the sprite sheet. You're real close and personal with it right there, but I just kind of want to see it. There you go. So, you know, like here's all your frames for your player, your weapons, and your world sprites. Your, your, like, your tiles. So, the only other thing that's like really crazy, um, there's a lot of logic with drawing the characters, like each frame updating. And then the only other thing is uh, maps. So like loading the map. And I have, I ripped this off. This is something I did rip off. I saw a guy on YouTube who was doing something, it was like a farming game. But uh, he had a neat way of generating maps with like text files like this. I added onto that and added collision. So this is like each, each like this is like the map three times over but different attributes if you think of it like that. Here's the dimensions. This is like a tile. I have this hard coded. Like each of these tiles represent a certain coordinate on that sprite sheet. This. Right, is, and 
where where is this like how how does the code yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll show you take like that in and know hey it's this symbol do X or just like this. is it just oh uh, it's just coordinates yeah two D map like so a two dimensional map here so we have a map of maps so depending on the second one like underscore F W or D so underscore W D F depending on this type it will use a separate map saying seven is like this coordinate in that sprite sheet. Okay. So it's like, you know, these are floors, like this would be like floor one, floor two. And like, this is a wall, this is like wall 10. This is like blank, blank zero is like an empty. It's alpha, like the whole, the whole tile is just like a clear tile, I guess you could say. And then again, this is just collision, different, different types of collision. And that's that's where you get um, like where I draw these white boxes from. These are collidable boxes. You can see like okay. I can't walk through it. And like you, this was the D type of collision. So you can see I had like special collision for this time this type of object. So you can get closer to it. It looks a little more neat. But yeah, yeah. So that's, and that's so the 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 enemy is its like own separate thing there that you just kind of brought in. Yeah, so the enemy um, is not loaded from this, correct. Now, the, another really good uh, refactoring opportunity would be like making a module for enemies that maybe had some logic with how they spawn. Mm -hmm. but right now, it's like hard-coded in initialization loop. So like, if I were to go show you that, under that initialize function, if we go main, just click on initialize, you can see where I init the window, set target FPS. I load the textures in like that big sheet, and I, I just reference them by coordinate later. And then I, I like create the player, so obviously create an initialization, a player weapon, enemy. So the player might make sense there, maybe not, if it's like a multiplayer game. The enemy definitely doesn't make sense here. It was just like a <laughs> POC thing. Like you, you would want like an enemy manager thing that like, by some logic, right, could spawn these guys out. And then some music, I, I load the music in. So that's like the initialize function, oh, and camera. And I add the uh, player and enemy to the collision map. That's all that happens in an enemy. That's just like top-down camera, right? Yeah, yeah. Or just the top-down camera? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a new 2D camera, and then you just kind of give it like its target, its rotation and whatnot. Pretty cool. Yeah, so that's initialized. Input is exactly what it sounds like. And I input can trigger, it's like cascading code state changes, right? So I was like, man, input needs like a whole management class in its own, maybe a module. But right now you can just see I'm checking for like, is are certain keys down? Is the mouse wheel moving? Because um, like, you know, you can zoom in and out. No, oh, I didn't see that when I played with it. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it was, it's a hidden feature. <laughs> That's RuneScape inspired. <laughs> um, so that's that's the whole input, right? And then update is most of it's like player checks and collision checks. There's a little bit about yeah, like the the combat system. I wrote this really nasty for loop for checking for projectiles and if they should be removed from the projectile array. All that stuff. Same thing for enemies. So how 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 did you uh, make the? Oh, is that what you were you know, surviving enemies? So I, yeah, I was about to ask how did you make the uh, the the health like? Um, oh, dude, that's the Whenever the enemy part. is hit. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's actually really interesting. You asked that. So that actually, uh, I was getting I was getting excited because I was thinking like the UI mechanisms. This is actually not part of the UI mechanism necessarily. Um, I just draw two rectangles. <laughs> So as simple as, it, <laughs> as simple as it is, so what you're talking about is when I hit them, um, it draws a green and a red rectangle, and it draws a green one second, so it's first, so it's on the top. And uh, that green rectangle, you know, you got to think it's happening 60 times a second. So uh, when I hit it, I just I size the green one according to the percentage of health, right? All right. And could you change the percentage? Like how much damage is done? Oh yeah, I, I did kill him way too slow initially. A fun little, yeah, let's just play with that because it's kind of fun to like see how it goes. So I think right now I have, let me just scroll the top. See, this is why it needs to be refactored. It's just so much scrolling. So under weapon, I think I have damage. Maybe not. So that means I probably have it hard-coded in the attack method right now. So it would be 
player.attack. Where's player.attack? Right here. Oh no, I don't even have it here. <laughs> Whoops. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's enemy. There's an enemy die method. Right. So you got hurt right there. Enemy health. So yeah, I just hard coded. I don't have any um. I guess I don't have logic to handle like. What is the E? Oh, E is enemy. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's just enemy. a pointer to yeah, enemy. I, I, yeah. Okay. So I, I could make them die faster. I think another thing. I think the attribute that I was manipulating was actually enemy health. So like, if health is equal to max health, we don't load the health bar. That's like why it's not there initially. But if it's not equal, all of a sudden you draw those two. I'll, I'll show you that logic. It's really interesting actually. So under enemy draw, I think it is, if health is not equal to max health and it's not dead, because if it's dead, you also don't want to draw it, right? For the number of frames right. it takes to clean up the enemy. Um, then you draw a red rectangle and then second you draw a green. <laughs> it's that simple. You could pull that out into its own method, like maybe um, some utility method, like draw health bar, but where you pass a pointer into some actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super high level. I think we've probably been talking about it for like 15 minutes now, but that's that's like the code state now. So maybe we should move on to like, what do we want to implement next? For this, my handy um, I said choose. range, but I don't know. Range might be time. Uh, we could like break it out into multiple sections, but think about that. So if we implement range, what's the first thing that, uh, that probably needs to happen? And I have some of the data structures partially set up. So right now, that like triangle, there's really circle segments. You can see if I move, you can see the time to live. If you see that pink bird claw looking thing. Yeah, yeah, I see it. So zero velocity, that's the thing to think about with melee attacks. So the projectiles are zero velocity. So we need to like, first thing, implement velocity. So, After you implement velocity, the difference of the range, and it probably be applicable to do this with melee as well, is have a sprite for an arrow follow the actual collision, collidable object. So I mean, unless you just want to make invisible range weapon. Yeah, that might be hard to play. <laughs> you just shoot, and if you get damage, great. It's it's kind of like Call of Duty, you know? Or no, Call of Duty is more like what do they call that? Where it's uh, if your reticles on them, you hit them. They're like battlefield games, like you have to like wait to see if you kill somebody. <laughs> you don't see the bullet. Um, yeah. But it'd be cool, I think, to draw the arrow sprite. I mean, we have the sprite right here, the arrow. So we could just rotate it. So you can make a bow that shoots swords. <laughs> that no, man, cool? is, that, is, that a, is that a hatchet? Is that a, is that a, uh, a meat a cleaver? cleaver, yeah. <laughs> should, should make the bow shoot meat. <laughs> it like spins and you shoot like a spinning <laughs> cleaver. Oh my gosh. They actually, in the in the sprite pack, they call this anime sword. I well, thought that was kind of cool. Or make, a, right. or make a staff that like shoots swords. I don't know. You could get creative. That's, that's why game development's fun. You can just do absolutely wild things. Um, so we also need to build a wield a bow. It's not super hard to turn the bow. Oh man, how would we do this though? So it's not like you get like a. Draw I mean, can't you just have it like? Uh, so go back to your uh, to the terminal uh, where the game's running. Yeah. Do you see the the half pizza slice thing there? Could we not just have it follow that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. For for melee, I made this. I mean, even range, we could have three arrows shoot at the same bow, taking heavy influence from Realm of the Mad God, actually. But the, yeah, for Realm of the Mad Code. Realm of the Mad Code. That does describe this project. But yeah, for simplicity's sake, we could do a central one only. That's not definitely not hard at all. That was actually the intention. Um, so maybe step one would actually be just get the bow equipped. Maybe have some hotkey switches weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's do that because it, it would look funny. I mean, I could do like a velocity projectile with your sword. Like, oh man, my yeah. monitors like died. Anyways, um, you, know, you swing a sword and it's like <laughs> that'd be kind of funny. But kind of like uh, uh, in uh, in Zelda when you're full health and you you know you swing a sword, the master sword, and it starts shooting stuff. That'd be kind of cool. So I mean, let let's switch weapons. Be a switchable. Off, but yeah. 
I can't wait to implement a UI with like inventory spots where you click on it, you equip the other weapon. I purposely um, made it to where like the mouse, there's mouse play, right? I, I want clickable elements, I feel like in the game. I think it'd be kind of cool. Like you can actually- You eventually gonna make more levels? Oh heck yeah. It's just right now, like, get the fundamental systems played out. I also want to create, this is another thing, I really want to implement um, like a map, uh, like a program that helps you create the maps. Because right now the text files, it's really easy to make maps of this size. It's not hard at all. So it's you're talking like a, a procedurally generated map? Not procedurally, but... RNG? No, not just like a tool like where when you're like changing code, like at items in the file, the first, the first implementation would be like, as you're changing in the file, it hot reloads on the screen. So you can like see it. Cause right now you have to like kill the program, restart it, kill the program, restart it. Every change you want to see. Uh, okay, I'm tracking, I got you. And so it's kind of like- It's uh... like a drag and drop, like, like put the tile where you want it to be. Also there's some mechanisms of like uh, depth of field, I guess. I don't know what you'd call it, but you can see like getting this to work is kind of a hassle in its own right. Making that more intuitive for whoever's designing these things, mm -hmm. where you're hiding behind stuff, like you can just set an integer value for how deep it is, and the player would just be like five, like zero to ten. You know, zero would be the floor, ten would be things that the player would never be in front of. Ah, it just thinking out loud, but that's another cool idea for implementing maps. But so maybe we do switchable weapon. Um, what key? You could just think about like what key. I mean, can we not just do like sword one, uh, bow two, just something easy, unless that's not easy. Yeah, we could do that. Like one, two, yeah. Yeah, it's just for now. I mean, if you want to make this like a bigger project, then I'd say like have inventory, and then you set hotkeys, and maybe at some point like implement uh, a staff that shoots uh, kittens or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or pizza, slices of pizza. You heal your oh, teammates. Pizza. That's the yeah. priest. <laughs> the priest <laughs> class. That'd be yeah. Baker class. And uh, the mechanism, like if it is a type of projectile, it'll already, I think, collide with an enemy and do damage. So once we get to where we've implemented velocity, drawing the sprite, and the bow's drawn, like, I think it'll already work. So it's probably a really good place to start. Okay. Okay. Do you you want to do it now? You want to code it? I mean, you're the one sharing your screen. Man. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Keeping you on your toes. It's your turn. No, that's that's bad. No, no. Sorry, I was. Um... So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add an input. Um, probably need some attribute on the player for what's equipped. Oh man, I'll tell you what I normally do. I normally just like shrink all of these because they waste so much screen space. Quick. I'm trying to think because right now we have like a static what's equipped. There's no variable determining such. Um, let's just do this. So if RL, so this at Raylib library it has a method for checking. Uh, so is key. Usually I like pressed because if it's down pressed. yeah if it if it checking down like it checks every frame so it's like it thinks you're hitting it every frame if it's pressed it only like reads on the release so yeah that makes sense pressed once yeah so it, it's kind of just a little less finicky like i think i had like a audio toggle with is key down and like you had to like cue the button to toggle audio you had to like hit q like five times for the frame to like not read because it's going to be at multiple frames while you're hitting it as a human. We type slow compared to how fast it processes. So let's look at our... I don't know, man. I'm at like 100 words a minute. That's... Words. So how many do you do a I second? I mean, they're small words. No, but like how, how many... But this is 60 a second. Can you do 60 characters a second? It's like... I can hold down 3, the 3,600 letters a minute <laughs> is what you have to type out to beat this. Um... Do they have to be, like, do they have to make sense, or can they just be jumbled mess on a keyboard? <laughs> Gotta make sense. <laughs> the precision's key. So, let's see here. We'll set some value, but first let's do format.print, right? Let's start easy. 
pressed one. And we'll do a similar thing. This is one of those, you can only switch one in a frame. So with like most input, you can do multiple inputs a frame, but this one I'll only let you do one. So if you're pressing one and two, sorry, you're gonna get one. Pick your finger up off of one if you want to. Yeah. Developer's preference. Just to make sure I got the right value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So save. And then we should see it down here. One, press one. Hey, one, hey look at that. Press two. And you see if I hold it, it doesn't just keep going. So that's great. I like it. I like it a lot. So what we need now it's something that actually manipulates a couple things. So we have our player object, which player object is actually a collision. We have player, which is a struct, I guess. And under player, you have a player dot weapon. So we will need to create another weapon. Maybe I need like a player dot arsenal <laughs> for all of these to live. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we'll need another player. Weapon. I mean, could we not like break that into? Uh... No, I don't think a map would be appropriate. I mean, it's yeah, just what planning it ahead. Means. Like, let's say you know you got swords, uh, apparently, uh, pizza slices. You know, mm -hmm. we're discovering like a differentiation between a weapon the player owns and the weapon that the player has equipped. Right. So you almost need two things. You yeah. Need you need the equipped weapon, but how do you, you know, in game if there's an ID associated with this? Um, an inventory is that map of weapons, but only one of them can be equipped at a time. That would be like an attribute, maybe on the player. But let's create a second weapon. I, I feel like this is kind of nice. We'll do this, um, and instead of calling it player weapon, we'll just default it to sword. So player sword, player sword. Maybe like sword, I don't know, what kind of sword is it? How many choices do we have for swords in that, that sprite list? A lot, but for now, we're we're implementing you, projectiles. You don't want to plan too far ahead? No, that's, that's silly. <laughs> Maybe it would be a good idea to break it out now, but I'm thinking we could run with sword for now, and then we'll also, so we're going to default player weapon to be player sword, and then we're going to also have a player bow, which is also another weapon. So I'm just going to copy and paste all of this because, you know, it works. Why not? Um, what does it not like about player bow? It's declared but not used. That's okay. We will actually probably make both of these like up here for now. So to do... Is your weapon struck? I'm trying to think what should manage weapons. Maybe the player should have an inventory. Find, you do. Find a better way. We'll remember what that means, right? Yeah. Basically, yeah, you don't need equals there. Nice. Okay, so what you did there is you assign the variable to the weapon that you define as a structured uh, thing right so that that was just a variable list it's like global variables it's a really hacky way to no, I mean, like, but, but weapon is something that's further on up in the uh, um, oh yeah so I have that struct defined correct yeah so I yeah, yeah, typed yeah. it just wanna, you know. yeah yeah I get what you mean so we have our sword sprite where you can see I have a lot of commented code let's go ahead and make our bow sprite which will be here. We don't need all this for our bow sprite. It's actually all wrong. And there's a handy dandy um, where I got this pixel art. 
I don't know if I actually have it up here still. Let me find it, and then I'll show you the handy dandy list. Yes, so here's like a list with, I think this is the x coordinate, y coordinate, width, height. And then if there's a last, if there's a final number or a fifth number, that's how many frames. So I guess it's okay. an animated fountain with three frames. Useful information. So if I like look for bow in here, I can. I don't have to go count the pixels. Yeah, you do. Yeah, and oftentimes it, I just. It's copy already there this. for you. Yeah, I'm just going to copy this and put it in the code for reference. So if we have our bow sprite here. Right, this will be 325 is the X, 180 is the Y, it is 7 by 25. Cool. And this is a scale ratio, so I'm, I'm making all the sprites like 35% bigger is roughly what that's doing. And I'm also, this rectangle, so what a, what a rectangle is, it's kind of from origin. So in game development, you know, your coordinate plane's different than like most geometry, for example. And it actually causes some really interesting artifacts when you get to trig, because trig relies on a lot of stuff <laughs> around the coordinate plane. But um, your origin, zero, zero, is the center of the Cartesian, or center of your plane, right? But okay. the positive, positive segment, you know, the quarter of the plane is actually the bottom right, instead of the top right. So think of it all as flip 90 degrees. So <laughs> it's kind of weird. Uh, I can actually show what that looks like really quick. So I, there's a lot of things here that track coordinates. So you can see like my players 253x, 144. So let's just pay attention to x. So x you would think is positive this way. And I think you'd be right. So positive this way, x. Right. Y, we're used to positive that way. So watch player, 102. I want to go down, which you would think is negative. Oh, nope, Y goes up. That's common in most game engines. I don't know why. But somebody okay. maybe smarter than me made that a, a normal thing. But, uh, yeah, that, that makes it really, really interesting. So, like, for example, this is 90 degrees. Like, my arrow to player, 90 degrees. This is zero. And in... I have negative 90. Instead of going like to two, this is where it gets really weird and trick. Instead of going to 359, zero to 359, I go from zero to 269, because 270 is three quarters of a circle, and then I have like a negative 90 to zero. There's some funny code to handle that. <laughs> so just so you know, the coordinate plane's a little fantastic. So um, when you think yeah. like X offset, y, ox y offset, think like your bottom right going from origin, that's like your starting point, and then height and width kind of determines the expansion of the square from that point. That's all this is, and it's, it's I tried to help explain it like visually the best you can. Maybe, maybe the way to think of it is like, this is that X, Y offset, and then like width and height, and then you get this definition of the square. Okay. Yeah, it's still kind of wonky but yeah or yeah. what would you say fantastic it's fantastic yeah so you have your bow sprite that's really just your source which is where it's coming from in the sprite sheet where we're, destinations where we're putting it on the screen so you can see there's some transformation here because we're scaling it um we're making and it you're just having it follow the player object yeah and I, i'm a, i'm making the how do you say the uh I don't want to call it the origin, but it's like the origin of this sprite is the player's hand. Okay. Right, which is a whole nother funny thing to get into that I'm not going to get into right now. I tried to think of some logical way to link these. So now we're going to oh, have yeah, a bow, and this object from Rectangle is resolving some issues between that resolve library and the Raylib library. So... Um, I'll actually go to that. It's just kind of funny, so I called it a janky fix. So they're both rectangles defined. Yeah, they're both rectangles defined with an x and y origin point and a height and width to give you a rectangle, but they don't actually line up. So they draw inversely. One draws 
positive direction according to the game's coordinate plane, and the other one draws, I think, the exact opposite, positive to negative. So is that is that just the sprite, or is that, like, the language itself, or...? It's probably something I did. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to ask that, but is it something you did, too? <laughs> so I did learn something after this that uh, made me think that, that you... It is a difference between how the default behavior between the Raylib package and the Resolve package. The default behavior, they they create the object's origin on different points. So that like one draws positive towards the positive positive, one draws towards the negative negative. You get like this inverse thing. Um, I could have controlled that. That's the default behavior. I think I, I was allowed to overwrite that. I just didn't know about it at the time. So I created these two inverse operations that flip between the two. Yeah. yeah, that's some more funky code, if you like funky code. Da, da, da. I think if I were to refactor this all, I wouldn't use the resolve package. I don't know if it, how, it doesn't fit every use case. Like, I couldn't do um, my combat collision detection with it. It just wasn't suited for that. So, okay, here, we get back to player bow. We have our object from rectangle. So this is a Raylib rectangle, this destination. Raylib new rectangle, and I, I need a resolve object. This is a collidable object on the resolve package. And then handle. So the player hand and the weapon handle are the two things that you kind of click together, right, in the code. We're going to just leave all this as it is for now. And I'm, I think this is sufficient. What this is going to do, it's going to, well, this is probably wrong. So this is saying the handle is in the middle of the Y and kind of towards the bottom of the height. So for a sword that makes a lot of sense, you have your hilt. For a bow, yeah. it's probably, yeah, that would probably be in the middle. more like 50-50. Even X might be a little yeah. offset, actually. So we'll try this, though. We'll try it. And what we can actually... I mean, maybe attack speed would be slower because, you know, you've got to notch the arrow there. So what we can do Knock here the for a test... Yeah, not... I think... Not, I don't know. I'm not no, an archer. No. So. <laughs> I'm not not either. So I want to change this for now. Uh, and I left myself a really good note here that might be a good time to implement this, a wield method that handles like all the attribute changes that need to happen on the swap. But let's just see what bow looks like now. So I'm going to save, restart the program. And man, look at that. We have us <laughs> a bow. It's a bow. That's on his feet? Oh, no, okay. Yeah, what you're doing is you're shooting. Okay. Yeah, so his hand... Now, you think about this for a second. Where do you think this guy's hand is? <laughs> I mean, that's not, <laughs> it's, it's not on his side. <laughs> yeah. So, there's a, lot, there's a lot to improve here, to say the least. But, yeah, I mean, it works. So, um... I can already think of three issues just from seeing that. <laughs> that are going to be hard to it's deal with. It's perfect. It's perfect. So it's moving like a sword. Uh, what we can do is we can go ahead and, you know, I wonder. So it's in the it's in the weapon dot draw method that it's drawing with that forty five degree angle because that's what you want with the sword. You want the sword. The sword straight up. It looks weird. So it looks like it's resting on his shoulder. You know, a thirty degree angle. The bow doesn't need that. So it's logical to think now that the rotation of the weapon should belong as like a weapon attribute. So should I keep working on the weapon swap or should I go fix that? <laughs> I say go fix that. Yeah, let's do that. So I think it's under probably weapon.draw. We have this, we have rotation. So rotation should be weapon.rotation, right? And that should be a per weapon thing. Um, and then if the attack frame, so rotation actuates, like it changes rotation when you're attacking. You probably don't need to do this. If attack frame, so either heuristically, maybe not heuristically, but like a hacky way to code this would be don't change the attack frames if it's a bow. Um, and you could say player dot attack frame. So how about a weapon dot rotates? Uh, what do you think is a good attribute for that? You say rotate. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to think. Like, if you looked at that attribute, would you know that that's specifically for the draw? Weapon dot. Mm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Switch? No. Like weapon no. dot has rotation or something like that. Or animates. Let's just go with rotates for now. Yeah, I'm kind of drawing a blank. Uh, anything that's actually meaningful. <laughs> so if it rotates, else if, so this is a thing that like kind of makes, like, it's, I call it like a breathe effect. Like, as you're standing there, you know, your character animates in this idle frame. When the sword is still, it looks really dumb. So I made, like, a small breathing motion with the sword, too. We'll want that for the bow. And then we'll want to flip the bow a sprite. When our player flips, that's good. So I think that's that's pretty much it. So we need to go has rotation. I don't know. This Java. <laughs> I mean, I would probably just put it as another number or letter or something. Not number, but yeah, I don't know. So let's see here. So we have has rotation, and this is going to be let's just call it boolean for now. And then what's the other thing we came up with? Uh, rotation. Is it rotation? I can't remember if that would be like an int. Probably float. I'm just thinking like idle rotation. Maybe for that. And then has attack rotation. Which attack rotation? Do you have to have the has? I mean, it's up to you. But. Well, it's a Boolean. So yeah, rotation so it would be, ha yeah, has attack, so. So idle rotation is rotation. Is that specified? Oh, we have this here. So we could probably just say W dot. Well, rotation gets moved. I see, and then it goes through frames. Yeah, I think that's effective. So that's going to initialize to false by default. This one has to be specified. But we will, we'll cover these. So we have our player bow now. Idle rotation is going to be zero. And then uh, we could specify we're going to. This is just false. And then our player sword, idle rotation, I think, th I think this was 30, negative 30 originally. And then has attack rotation is true. And really, it'd probably be best to find some nice way to specify what that rotation looks like in terms of how many degrees because different weapons are probably look better doing different things but anyways let's see if that solves yeah, not like it's stuck on his knee yeah <laughs> metal rotation cannot use variable type with float 64 as type float 32 and variable declaration I done goofed it. I can awesome. I don't know if anybody wants to see any more of us, but yeah. I made a smaller. <laughs> no, okay, that's better. <laughs> I, I fixed that problem. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna make this float thirty two. I'm gonna try to run it again. And man, now I just gotta maybe make it higher, right? What do you think? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I should make the bow smaller, actually. <laughs> he makes a sword sound. That's <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> you know, thinking about it, that might sound like the bow shooting. I will leave it for now. It's good enough. Um, yeah, I might make the bow a little smaller, like squat height-wise, bump it up. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So we're going to squashify this. We're not going to keep the same ratio, actually. So I think this is height, rectangle. The last one is height. So let's just do like point. Maybe we do point 0.9 here. And. Oh gosh, where was the. Uh, this is it, the handle. Let's call the handle like. You usually hold right under where you put the arrow, right? So let's say that it's like um, six five. Yeah. A lot of it's just tuning. Man, it looks so funny now. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so small. So let's let's make this seven seven five, and then I'll make it a little taller again. So I'll make it one point one. Do you think I should move it forward? Um, no, I mean, that looks good, I guess. Uh, doesn't look too bad. Should I turn it forward, like maybe 20 degrees, so it's pointing down? Then maybe, uh, if attacking, set it to zero? Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And, like, load the arrow in as well. That'd be kind of cool. Or... Oh man, hmm. It would be. I wonder if I could make the bow like turn full 360 when when attacking. What do you mean? Like just follow the. Uh, yeah, the like cursor. keep the rotation, the offset of the cursor when he's attacking, and when he's walking, you know, just kind of leave it as is. But like tw maybe twenty degrees four or something like that. That's not what I wanted to do. So yeah, I think that might be the way forward. So when he's idle, let's call it like twenty. Maybe even further down. All right. I don't know, should it just be like almost straight down? Thoughts? No. What, what should it look I like? Think, I think that would be fine, because I mean, he's running, if you're going to go with... Does this work? <laughs> <laughs> Smacking him with the bow. <laughs> I don't have ammo. <laughs> That's too funny, yeah, it's still registering these. <laughs> Because it's not a weapon attribute that it takes us off of. It's just hard coded. Oh, that's kind of funny. So, you think like this is sufficient? Yeah, I think that's good. I want to. I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna see how it looks. So, idle rotation. Let's just say like 90. Man, that looks funky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> It looks like he's stepping all over it. <laughs> what, what kind of weapon is this? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Anyways, that's a flop. We'll convert it. I think maybe 20 was even more sufficient. What do you think? Yeah, I think 20 or 35. One or the other. Yeah, that's that's good. So when attacking... It doesn't look too ridiculous. Do it. When attacking, I need to make the uh, rotation match. Oh, maybe I'll just say when attacking, set it to zero. Hmm. This almost, like, calls for, like, having, like, a method, like, an attribute that's, like, some kind of lambda. Does going have... Is this going to add, like, a couple hundred lines to your massive file here? No, it should be like an attribute on the weapon. Oh, okay. So, and that might actually simplify, I just wonder, what's the type of that? So if we have our weapon here, we could just say, 
attack rotator is type function. Does that work? And it could take a reference, maybe. So would that not be like a... Uh, no, that wouldn't be circular, but it seems a little... I don't know. Anonymous function on show. Yeah, so you can define like an interface, right? But this is like a type. So it can take a type of enemy, but you're defining that in line. So the definition would be hard. So let's think about what we need here. So if we have... Could you not use the same type of logic for uh, that you did when swinging the sword? Exactly. I'm like thinking, what do I need to edit? I need to know the attack frame. So I could just pass in like frame count. Oh, but I'm incrementing it here. So I really want to pass it as a pointer. And then I'm editing the rotation. So I could say rotation is equal to weapon dot rotator. Um, so if the attack frame is greater than zero. So I could increment the attack frame outside of the loop, like outside of this uh, method. And then I just need mm -hmm. to do some math here. And then maybe call weapon.move after. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. So we'll just do this. We'll do attack frame, or attack plus plus here. But your attack frame is Oh, I see. So currently I have it set to... This I could probably just move out. So this is like player level stuff. I really don't care about any of that for this method. I really just need to actually get the rotation value differently for different weapons. How is this? So pretty much if it's not idle, do this, else do the idle idle stuff. Mm, even the idle stuff should probably... That's okay though. So I would say just rotation is equal to w dot attack rotator this will take something I'm not quite sure yet and then we can increment this is what's going to go inside of the, the attack rotator and then that So I'm hoping, like, if that function's not defined, I can serve as our condition if we want to do this. Like, if it's not defined, we just won't do rotation. But if it is defined, we want to apply it. All right, so that would be, like, uh, staves, steps, stuff like that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see where a rotator would be defined for something like that. I mean, unless you're just beating the crap out of somebody with it. Exactly. And maybe, you know, it'll still, who knows, maybe this will never be a valid condition, but I don't want to try to call a function that's not defined, I guess. So what yeah. do I need here? This is, this is kind of like the internals of that function. So like, pass in maybe rotation, like current rotation. I need to pass in attack speed golly there's so much here in frame so float 32 all these three float 32s 
how could I maybe make I'm just thinking how can I make a common interface for attack rotator they should all be read only so maybe I should just pass in the weapon and the player in the rotation and then just have it as a bung So what are the three things you might need? The three things you might need. Because it, it could be different logic for each one of these. So let's just say we have rotation, which is float. So let's just call it R. Uh, let's, let's do here rotation. Rotation. And then we have E, enemy. Not enemy. W, weapon. P, player. Seems funky. So it would be something like this. And you see, I'm just, I'm already using weapon idle rotation. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could just say it like this, like this weapon. So that should work as soon as, oops, take this, why doesn't it like that though? Um, oh, not I being don't have what it's right. returning, it's returning a 32, float 32. Still doesn't like that? It doesn't like weapon. Oh, it's a pointer. Yeah, I don't know if I actually want to pass a pointer. It shouldn't be manipulating anything. So I need to pass that by reference. Dereference. Looks good. <laughs> what is this? Put in a stop point. Oh, okay. Oh, that's it is what you've changed. That's get changes, yeah. So down here. This is no longer an attribute, which is great. So it was kind of crummy anyways. So we have, what was it called? Attack rotator. And this is gonna be some function. Which I forget. I had that somewhere here. So you can just define it in line, I think. No, okay, now we need a return. So we have a return. W dot rotation. Let's call it idle rotation. So for this is weapon. So I want to just copy this logic for weapon divided by float 32 W dot attack speed times float 32 play dot attack time. Cool. So that is our attack rotator for the player sword. Our attack rotator for the bow might be more complicated, actually. Well, you're just bringing it up to zero, right? And then we could do that. I was thinking making because that that would that would put it as you know pretty straightforward or pretty level. Make it follow mouse, <laughs> but yeah, let's just make no. it to zero. No. So for now. Cool, let's see if that worked. I think it's always zero now. So maybe that function is never nil. <laughs> Interesting. 
Hunt for Golang Playground. Do you remember you the code? You pulling right live on Go? Do I remember the code? What? The code for uh, checking type of something. Like, let's say... Nah. I want to move, I think, this to the side so I can reference it. So I want to check. So I'm going to have, like, F, which is going to be a, a lambda function, really. Shift and so shift tab and tab both just tab. <laughs> cool. So here this will return test. But can I just define it? What's the default is kind of what I'm thinking. It's the percent T. What just happened? Do what? Oh, I'm just so used to hitting control S. So it returns the memory address of F. You're trying to look for the type, right? It's kind of what I was thinking. Like, how is this evaluating? So if I do this, right, I imagine these would be different. Nil. So if f is not equal to nil, because we're hitting this condition, I believe. I could be wrong. Format dot print line test 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 not nil oh. not gonna work undefined oh okay, okay. yeah and you got yeah some syntax issues there so that's what I would expect and then if I did this here right okay so that works as expected I was wondering if this is something weird in that code so we're always getting zero. So it's always doing attack rotator. Where does it use that? So right if, there, line, yeah, 272. If the frame and not equal to nil. Otherwise, make it zero. So this, okay, I see. This is actually pretty important to do the um, w dot. Is it not idle, idle rotation? I thought it oh, was. okay. All right, I'll try. Yeah, I, I thought it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it goes up to zero. Down to zero? Huh. It's making it cool down, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I do think it'll look better if it, like, follows the mouse. Try and attack the dude. I mean, it's going to attack with these. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just seeing it. Okay. All right. I just wanted to see if it was, you know, attacking on the up or if it was coming down and looking like it was hitting instead. So if we just add, like, an arrow and have it shoot across, it would, it would look like it's actually yeah. being used. Yeah, so let's uh let's set our weapons now. So let's find the input function. So here we'll just say if key is one player dot weapon player dot weapon is equal to what was it player was sword. it sword? Player sword, yeah. yeah. And then this should be That's player bow. So we may have the swap done now. Mm, has no field or method a move 277 a move 
That's kind of funny. So, 277. You a little typo there? Yeah. Uh, a move. A move. A little typo. Cool. So, now if we have our bow. One. Hey! Neato. Pretty cool. Oh. Oh, hey. What? <laughs> Yeah. So that is quite interesting. You know, I know exactly what's causing that. Um, Wait, how how do you hit the guy? Is it still uh, with the weapon that way, or is it with you on top of him? Oh, it's definitely going to be here. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what that is, is on the initialize function, I initialize those sprites to where he started, right? Um, now, I noticed that sometimes... It's fixed, and I'm really not sure why, how, what is <laughs> doing. It's like getting worse. <laughs> but you can tell that's that's where my player was kind of starting, right? Uh, yeah. So. Oh my goodness, what is going on? <laughs> so, oh boy, that is just gross. Uh. That's awesome. So this is why we need an equip. So an equip method. Oh, the just, switch works though. It just looks like you know my. Looks pretty yeah. bad. So we need like a player dot equip player sword, player dot equip player bow, and that equip needs to drill in. So let's just let's go implement that. Maybe that could be what we end tonight. This okay. is this is the name of the game, man. I feel like every time like I add something, I run to like fifty bugs. <laughs> right? you, you make me want to start figure out how to equip weapons. And the not have them sling across the object-oriented way. Because there's obviously and then and then at some point we need to figure out how to just throw weapons at the enemy, right? <laughs> That's probably the easy part. <laughs> so let's just do this. Um, so we're gonna have, is it player dot equip? Yeah, it's gonna be a, something on player. So we'll have a pointer to a player. And we're gonna call this equip. Should it be equip weapon? Yeah. 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 Because armor might be different. So what's gonna what are we gonna pass into this? Well we're gonna pass a pointer to a weapon. And what is it gonna return? Nothing. So very very simply, we should probably say like player dot weapon is equal to weapon. The value of it at least. But that's gonna be the last thing we do. We need to say weapon dot destination. So I'm trying to think of all the attributes. So weapon dot destination should probably be equal to. Is this going to be, be, be like player dot destination? Be like player, right? Player dot destination or so whatever it is. I'm trying to think of like the offsets. So it might be actually the player dot hand, like p dot hand. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But we'll we'll take a look at this. So I can probably just copy what I have and initialize. We just need to update this. It's not updated, and that's the issue. So we have like a sword sprite. So sword dot sprite dot destination is player hand, and then. This is the logic right here. So we need to update the destination X and Y. So we don't want to update all of destination because that's some of the scaling stuff in it as well. But this this will be pretty straightforward and I, th I think it'll work out well. So um so we're gonna have weapon dot sprite dot destination is gonna be equal to P and we'll figure out what's going on here and then weapon dot sprite dot destination I think this is Y so this will be dot X there might be a type issue like float to int or something but no that looks all okay expect it equal equal because that doesn't make sense so this might work right here you know just a little more logic And let's do that.
So now we'll say player.equip, player token. Dot equip, player, bow. <coughs> And I actually wonder, maybe it would be best to do this by pointer. What? Um, just just curious I don't, on your logic. I don't know if I really want, I am doing it by pointer, but player.weapon is not a pointer to a weapon, and that's where I could probably improve. Because I, I don't want copies of this object in memory. Right, I want there to be one. So in the day, maybe if this was multiplayer, you assign a GUID to an item. A weapon can be an <clears> item, but I want this weapon to belong to like one player and not be copyable in memory. So when you make changes, okay, you're making right. changes to the source of it. Yeah. That's that's kind of my thought there. I mean, it could be horribly flawed, but <laughs> that's literally how it goes, right? And there's another error here. It's going to be so player. Let's just make this like a. Yeah, yeah, I need to go update that and my VARs. So these are both pointers to weapons. Probably gonna throw a little, a few more errors, that's all good. Because this is what I wanted to be different. I just wanted these to take the pointers. Is that not returning a pointer? Okay. Save it, run it. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> oh. This is weird. You don't have like any debug messages coming out either. So. My goodness. So they, they look right almost when I equip them. They start getting weird after that. Huh. So what if I what if I never actually change? I think maybe it's only done by changing weapons. What if I click the same button? It's all good. You think it's maybe that package? No, no. It wasn't that severe. This is this is like a really big thing, like almost like adding the X instead of the width or something. Um, so what are we doing? So P hand maybe is only specified once on player move that might be an issue. I need to update hand as well on player move. So What is hand? It's a point. So what was the original logic for hand? Yeah, it's it's almost like the player hands link. It, but it's so weird because the weapons are just jumping to totally different areas. So when I initialize the player, I say hand is equal to this. So player dot object. I could probably just copy this, honestly. Oh, 
That might be one issue. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this might have stumped me. I might have to spend more time on this one. It's only after the attack, too. Like, if I just run around, no. No, no, it was it was doing it when you started running around. Yeah. So it's on the move method, because the move method is called after an attack as well as when you move. So what is so I... is it the same thing whenever you like just switch without moving? So so if you switch uh, weapons without moving, does it does it do that? So if I switch without moving, no. Okay. So when you attack, it calls move, and when you move, it calls move. I mean, then. okay. So something in this p weapon dot move. Maybe I screwed it up. Recenter weapon after attack animation. So maybe it's recentering back to zero zero in the hole. Yeah, there's like um, a small precision issue here. I bet if I comment that out, it won't cause like it'll be the same original issue. Somebody one two. This is the old issue. This is kind of funny. Actually, it's not happening anymore. The old issue was when I would attack, the sword would slowly go further and further down. I might have fixed that. <laughs> No, it was this. Oh man, there it goes. Maybe not. Let me let me kill it again. Because switching weapons probably just confuses the whole thing. This is the old issue. See that? It's like slowly getting lower. Well, I mean, it looks like it's going up and down. It's just the the breathe that you were talking about earlier. Just uh, it's like it's. not caught up to the player like the player is breathing and his arms are moving at a different speed so when you move around it's slow like it because it calls dot move again this doesn't call dot move so i realized like a really subtle bug where it would slowly get lower and lower if you weren't moving and i don't really see it happening here i remember it would have been like my sword would have been lower than me See, there's no dot move there. What's going on? And now it doesn't seem like it has this issue. But if I go back to this. <laughs> that was just in your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like worse. <laughs> I'm really curious what this bug is. There's just, it, the randomness kind of confuses me a little. <laughs> you don't think it's your computer, do you? I mean, what? No, there's definitely some, I, I'm just, I feel like there's like a pointer to weapon being used maybe in 90% of places. And then maybe in one place, it's like the sword value for something is used and then it gets out of sync or something. This is where well-written code is harder to mess up like this. It's like it progressively gets worse, right? <laughs> it looks terrible. <laughs> like there's like some offset that just slowly pushes it further and further away. That's what I'm trying to like tell like what's the thing. Oh man. It's a feature. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, it's a feature. We'll just call it a feature. Well, we can call it there. We're at time, 7 o'clock. I'm going to try to figure out what this one is, and maybe I can come back in the next stream and show you what the issue is. All right.